Hey there, welcome. My name is Alonda Carter and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM, that's anti-multi-level marketing videos. And I also do some things on white collar crime, some true crime, and basically anything that's kind of scammy. Today, this is going to be a doozy. Now, recently I did a reaction or a response video to a Modare opportunity that a Modare Hunbot presented. And in that video, I gave you kind of a brief overview of the history of Modair. Well, you might need to get a flow chart. You might need to take some notes. You're going to need something because this is a long and twisted and involved tale. Please do not send any hate to anyone involved in multi-level marketing, direct sales, network marketing, social selling, whatever name you want to slap on it. Just, you know, don't do any of that and be civil to each other in the comment section and to me. I mean, the world really could use a little bit more niceness. This video is based on my research experience and opinion. There'll be a link to the sources I used in the video description. Now sit back and get comfy. You might even want to grab an adult beverage because this, like I said, is a very twisted tale. And I'm amazed at how much I uncovered that was readily available, but I'm sure there's so much more. Now on the Modair website, there's nothing, everything about the history, about how the company came into being. I mean, they've completely just swept that all under the rug and for good reason. And if you're a Modair rep, this is a story that you really need to hear because you need to know what you're actually involved in. Your role in this story is to keep believing that you can get to the top and to buy products. My hope for you is after this story concludes, you will be able to rethink your choice. And now let's get to this twisted tale. Try as it may, one thing Modair cannot do easily is escape its past. In 1987, Thomas and Leslie D. Mower founded Images and Attitudes in Salem, Utah. Thomas Elwin Mower was born on July 15, 1942 at the LDS Hospital in Salt Lake City. He passed away suddenly August 2nd of 2020. He attended the University of Utah and is said to have been a natural born salesman. He received a number of unnamed awards and is said to have inspired millions through TV, radio, the internet, and in packed arenas around the world. Allegedly, at one point, he built the fifth largest network marketing company in the world and employed over 1,200 people. He employed family members that he mentored. Leslie D. Ann Mower began to work on the narcotics squad of the Salt Lake Police Department at 18. According to an interview she gave, Leslie was trained as a nurse, later as a secretary, and spent two years in the field of makeup artistry. Tom and Leslie ran their company called New Bright for 12 years. The products are said to have used harsh chemicals in more than 400 different industrial products, including engine degreasers. Allegedly, one day Tom asked why she needed so many cosmetics. The story goes that the two of them looked at the ingredients of the cosmetics products she used and were shocked to see that they contained the same ingredients as their new bright products, in which OSHA told them not to let these ingredients get on their employee skin. Tom and his wife started making toxin-free products right in their home until they realized they needed an office and a manufacturing plant. Dee asked her father for a loan to pay for their expansion. They moved their product producing from their Fairview home in Utah to Salem, Utah, where they developed their own line of personal care products. In 1992, the company rebranded as Kneeways. 
and Robert Conley was made CEO. Remember that name because he makes a reappearance later in the story. The mowers decided to use the multi-level marketing model because conventional advertising is expensive and really doesn't do anything about the products being sold other than to enhance name recognition and support illusionary cosmetic benefits. Niways felt the word of mouth is the best form of advertising, more so by avoiding the outrageous sales and advertising costs that almost all other cosmetic companies bear, Niways was able to pay for the expensive ingredients necessary to give the products the performance people were looking for. Throughout its inception, New Ways came under fire for questionable product sales, such as accusations for illegal distribution of prescription drugs. In 1993, a year after the rebranding of images and attitudes into New Ways, the company came under fire by the FDA, which recalled their New Ways quickly weight loss because it contained potentially dangerous amounts of fermicide, a prescription diuretic. Fermicide is primarily used for the treatment of hypertension and edema and requires a prescription in the U.S. According to the FDA, taken fermicide can lead to the depletion of water and electrolytes from the body, blood volume reduction, dangerously low blood pressure, and heart complications. It also can cause nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, hearing loss, dizziness, headache, rash, and dermatitis. In 1994, the company unveiled a cosmetics line called Leslie D. And, and over time grew to be distributed to 23 companies, including the United Kingdom, Russia, Eastern Europe, Japan, the Philippines, and Israel. Thomas claimed UAs had $170 million in sales in 1997 and $300 million in 1998. Some say UAs distorted scientific research and used scare tactics to promote its products as healthy alternatives. Specifically, in 1993, product literature claimed sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS, and sodium laureth sulfate, SLES, which is found in shampoos and soaps, had toxic properties and could present dangerous side effects, citing the research of Dr. Keith Green, professor of ophthalmology at the Medical College of Georgia. Dr. Green stated UAs took his research out of context. All of his research was conducted on animals, yet UAs indicated there were human studies that revealed eye irritation to SLS. Dr. Green contacted New Ways in 1993 regarding how they misrepresented his findings. New Ways issued a public apology, and you would think it would stop there, right? However, references to Dr. Green's research continued to appear in New Ways literature and on audio tapes, which prompted Andrew Norton from the Medical College of Georgia to threaten legal action in 1997. Newton again contacted New Ways in 1998 after finding reference to Dr. Green's study on the New Ways website. In 1999, New Ways began distributing Biojevity, an oral spray with claims it improved sexual performance, lowered cholesterol, decreased the appearance of wrinkles, helped reduce body fat, and provided rejuvenating benefits. There was one slight problem. This miracle spray contained human growth hormone, or HGH, which was illegal to get without a prescription. In October of 2003, the company paid a $500,000 criminal fine and forfeited $1.25 million in profits. Apparently, all was not well in the Mower household. Tom and Dee divorced in February of 2000. The following year, both were charged with six counts of income tax evasion and conspiring to defraud the IRS. The indictment claimed they used unreported income to purchase assets, including 1,400 acres of land, and that they used false names and social security numbers, including one of their children's, to conceal the income, falsify corporate books and records, used a fraudulent loan document to conceal commission income from Australia, 
and also place themselves in an advantageous position at the top of New Way's marketing structure in the United States, Australia, and Malaysia. In 2002, the pair were forced to surrender their post at New Ways as executives. Michael Cunningham, who had worked at New Ways for 10 years, was made CEO in June of 2002. In April of 2003, a federal grand jury indicted the former New Ways attorney, James Thompson, and charged him with conspiracy and obstructing an IRS investigation. The mowers then faced a second conspiracy charge for working with Thompson to conceal close to $1 million in New Way sales. In April of 2003, the pair appeared for the grand opening of the New Way's headquarters in Springville, Utah. Tom and Leslie were found guilty of their crimes in 2005. In total, the mowers did not pay personal income tax on $3.2 million based on their individual tax returns from 1992 to 1997. In Thomas's hearing, his attorney, Max Wheeler, claimed that Thomas Mower is a very charitable man, as can be seen by the tens of thousands of dollars given to an orphanage in Costa Rica and donating money to sponsor an Olympic athlete, along with giving to a variety of other charities. There are many criminals who seek to appear to be upstanding citizens by giving to charity. Just because you give to charity or multiple charities, does not mean you're honorable. Thomas Mower was sentenced to 33 months in federal prison and to serve 36 months of supervised release in addition to paying a fine of $75,000. Leslie Mower was sentenced to 27 months in federal prison and given 36 months of supervised release and paid a fine of $60,000. Tom and Dee paid David Novak $25,000 each to keep them out of prison. Novak, though, was not exactly an upstanding citizen. In the 90s, he faked a plane crash in Washington state to collect insurance money. Novak, at the time when Tom and Dee knew him, was acting as a consultant to white-collar criminals. Novak had promised that he was going to contact Senator Orrin Hatch, who could in turn get them pardons from President George W. Bush. They were never pardoned. After Tom and Dee served time, Novak was sued by the widow of Ken Dozler, who had been a hockey coach for Utah Valley State College. Dozler was gunned down in 2007 in a parking lot of the Sandy Village Inn restaurant. Dozler's widow was none other than Leslie D. Mower. She claimed Novak hired someone to kill her husband. Christopher Eugene Wright was convicted of the murder. However, some believe the wrong man was convicted. On February 3rd of 2012, Dateline presented the story. However, the case does not sit well, and people theorize that Novak framed Wright. Allegedly, New Ways attempted to restructure. On November 8th of 2006, New Ways International was acquired by the Dutch company Golden State Capital, a private equity firm located in San Francisco for about $500 million. New Ways had been in discussion with lenders to refinance its debt and had defaulted on about $235 to $250 million. That same year, Thomas Moore and his son, Tom Jr., formed another MLM called Sizzle. Sizzle stands for Science, Innovation, Energy, and Longevity. Tom's ex-wife, Leslie Deanne, and her son, Bob Steed, meanwhile founded Trivani in 2007, which is another multi-level marketing company. Trevani features nutritional products, personal care, skin care, and vitamins. Trevani also had a charity attached to it called Trevani Foundation. The Trevani Foundation came under fire and was investigated by the state of Utah for violating the Charitable Solicitations Act. When the matter was settled, there was an agreement to remove MOA from all positions in the Trevani Foundation. Former Trevani distributors alleged that the starving children featured 
for the Travani Foundation were actually local school children passed off as starving children. At some point, another multi-level marketing company called Wake Up Now, which no longer operates in the U.S., acquired the Travani product line. <music> Meanwhile, Newey started to have success in Japan. Several Newey's distributors had left Newey's to join Sizzle. As with most distributor agreements, you are not supposed to recruit people from the old MLM into the new one. However, this is something that routinely happens. The story goes, Sizzle distributors tried to plunder the new ways distributor database and bring them over to Sizzle. In 2007, new Way sued Sizzle. Sizzle was not only accused of cross-recruiting, but also taking New Way's trade secrets and selling them after New Way's was bought by Golden State Capital in 2006. In May of 2007, Sizzle was ordered to return copies of New Way's product formulas, vendor list, distributor list, and Sizzle was prohibited from using any of that information in the future. Sizzle then turned around in 2008 and filed a defamation suit against New Ways. In February of 2012, Mower alleged Ideal Health, aka the Trump Network, had defaulted on a loan. He had become interested in acquiring the company and had loaned $270,000 to the company in October of 2011. I am not going to go down further into this rabbit hole, but let me know if you'd like me to do a video on Sizzle or the Trump Network. There is so much more to this story, and I'm sure there's more shenanigans that are involving Mower. I'm just not trusting this guy. I hate to speak ill of the dead, but the man seems to have been very crooked and just not a good person given all the misdeeds associated with him and multi-level marketing. In July of 2013, Z Capital Partners became the controlling shareholder of New Ways. In February of 2014, New Ways USA rebranded as Modare with, wait for it, Robert Conley as the CEO. Remember, I told you to remember that name because he was also the CEO of New Ways. Today, Conley is Modare's chairman of the board. Before Conley jumped onto the New Ways train, he attended Brigham Young University, where he majored in Japanese. Kind of makes sense now how New Ways broke into that market now, doesn't it? He also acquired his MBA from Temple University. Conley spent seven years with a little company called NuSkin, where he worked as the chief operating officer in the Pharmanex Nutritional Division, then became president of NuSkin Japan. If you did not know, NuSkin is also an MLM and it's also in the health and wellness niche. He left NuSkin and worked for Django, another MLM. And P.S., the FDA issued the company a warning in 2006 for illegally marketing more than 20 health benefits of their Django juice. According to an article by Behind MLM, under the guise of transfer buying, the concept of recruiting new New Ways distributors and getting them onto a monthly $150 auto ship is revealed. The New Ways compensation plan described the $150 auto ship as the key to getting the most out of the New Ways compensation plan. Getting distributors to purchase products monthly is a hallmark of MLM. The ones that claim you do not need to make a purchase when you dig in, you discover the entry level sometimes does not require a purchase. But if someone wants to make money and rise through the ranks, a product of some sort is required. Be that product the latest collection of jewelry or some leggings. New Ways rebranded as Modare and retained a focus on auto ship, which was a hallmark for New Ways. Overall, it seems to have just taken the products offered by New Ways and slapped on a new label with the rebranded company name. Today, the Modare website contains no information about its history, and I suspect that's very intentional. Those who are joining today are doing so blindly without having any idea of the shady past the company has. Mm -hmm. 
On December 30th of 2016, the multi-level marketing company Nurium filed a lawsuit against Modere. The suit sought to stop a couple of former high-ranking distributors from stealing Nurium's unpaid sales force to join Modere. Remember, I told you this type of behavior is not uncommon. It happens all the time. However, companies generally do not make a fuss unless there is some sort of mass exodus due to a high-up distributor jumping ship and joining forces with the competitor. Meanwhile, Nurium is not without its own set of problems beyond the Modere issue. In August of 2016, a class action lawsuit was filed against Nurium for allegedly operating an illegal pyramid scheme. In 2019, Nurium rebranded as Noria. There seems to be a lot of deja vu because the FTC alleged Noria to be a pyramid scheme too. During all this, Doug Burdick was a high-ranked Nurium robot who solicited to act as a corporate spy to set up Modare for an anti-competitive lawsuit. This was orchestrated to dampen the rebranding of new ways to Modare in the U.S. market. Allegedly, there were other Nurium distributors who were wanting to exit stage left due to Nurium's unethical business practices. Back over in Modare land in 2017, Modare gobbled up a company called Jusuru. By joining forces with Modare, Jusuru's award-winning life blend beverage with collagen HA matrix technology would be able to expand into international markets. The Modare Collagen Sciences Division is actually Jusuru. The former president of Jusuru, Ozma Ishak is now Modare's CEO. Ozma attended Rice University and received a dual MBA in financing and marketing in 2002. What I find disturbing is that she received a Business Alumni Industry Excellence Award in Entrepreneurship from Rice University in 2018. A prestigious university such as Rice, in my opinion, should not be honoring anyone associated with multi-level marketing. I think this really highlights how much people in general do not understand the overall predatory nature of such companies that continue to prey on vulnerable people to join them, even though the likelihood of any sort of financial success is slim and next to none, especially given how old Modere actually is. On January 31st of 2018, Modere closed their business operations throughout Korea, Thailand, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, and Malaysia. Japan became the sole Asian country offering Modere products and the so-called opportunity for others to become distributors. In 2020, another multi-level marketing company called Isagenics filed a lawsuit against Modare and a group of its distributors, claiming Modare engaged in unethical behavior and illegally recruited Isagenics distributors. Do you notice a pattern here? This is not the first rodeo when it comes to being accused of poaching from another MLM. Allegedly, Isagenics believes a plan was hatched in May of 2018. This plan involved a Modare representative contacting Isagenics about the company possibly acquiring Modare. However, Isagenics said no thanks because they felt Modare had an unstable ownership and brand. In mid-2019, it is alleged top Isagenix reps were recruited into Modare. Allegedly, Mark Clausen, who was with Isagenix, was guaranteed to earn a minimum of $180,000 his first year with Modare if he jumped ship. It is said that recruitment into Modare from Isagenix started happening in private Facebook groups and via text messages. Clausen pretty much threw caution to the wind and is said to have violated the agreement he signed with Isagenix and started poaching other higher tiered Isagenix reps. Overall, there seems to have been a lot of backroom deals going on, which is not anything new in the world of MLM or when people move from one company to another. There is a lot of wheeling and dealing. However, these companies do not want these deals to be made public because their entire business depends on recruiting others who think they stand a chance at making it. They don't. Apparently, Clausen also did the same thing when he jumped from New Skin to Isagenix. In other words, 
there's a pattern of behavior. In May of 2020, Isagenix dropped their U.S. case but decided to continue pursuing a case in Australia since the alleged poaching and raiding began with two former Australian distributors, Heidi and Lau McAllen. In 2018, a former Modere distributor, Jesse Lee Ward, also sued Modere. Jesse Lee started selling Modere back in October of 2015. She alleged Modere stopped paying her in August of 2017. In 2017, Ward left Modere and joined Proven, another multi-level marketing company. Ward claims Modere was essentially dead, and later the case was dismissed. Also in 2017, Modere was sued by Advocare, a multi-level marketing company that was found by the FTC to be operating as an illegal pyramid scheme in 2019. The suit also included Jesse Lee Ward and Amber DeLuke for allegedly poaching Advocare distributors and getting them to sign up with Modere. There are also a number of complaints about Modere reported to the Better Business Bureau. In fact, there are so many, I got tired of them loading the additional complaints and additional complaints. From my stance, the number of complaints from 2020 to 2021 are exceptionally large. Additionally, consumer watchdog Truth in Advertising has featured the various health and income claims made about Modere's products and alleged opportunity. As I was conducting my research for this deep dive, I was stunned by the multitude of problems associated with Modere. It is just mind-blowing to me that this company still is in operation. It seems to be riddled with problems, and what is most unfortunate is that people are continuing to join that have no idea about its dark history. The images you are seeing are pictures of the late Tom Mower's home located in the Upper Canyon area of Hobble Creek Canyon near Springville, Utah. The home is nearly 50,000 square feet and sits on 156 acres. It includes an enormous indoor pool with a waterfall, movie theater, bowling alley, indoor basketball court, and an indoor area for archery or shooting. There is nothing wrong with luxurious items, you know, when you earn a substantial living. However, I draw the line when someone lives lavishly because their wealth was created through deception. Tom not only went to jail for fraud, but knew questionable characters like Novak. And once out of prison, it's not like he turned his life around. He continued in the same business that landed him in jail. And I suspect there are other slippery deals he made over the years. Although I do not have pictures of his former wife's home, she too, once out of jail, continued in the same type of business. There is something about the excess that does not sit well with me given how most people never make money in multi-level marketing. And you have someone like Tom who lives in a home like this. In my opinion, the home is garish and ostentatious. Nothing about this home to me is inviting or looks like somewhere you can relax and unwind. The home reminds me a lot of Igor E. Albert's mansion. He's a former OneCoin leader and I did a deep dive on him. There'll be a link to it in the description. After the research I did, I cannot possibly think that either of the mowers are good people. There is just way too much dirt. And I just wonder what other backroom deals were made that aren't documented. But what really bothers me is that there are others who rise up in the world of multi-level marketing, perpetuating the harm that they are causing and do so by getting their children involved and their children in turn continue this cycle. I would think if you are raised in a world of elite multi-level marketers, you think it's legit and buy into the bogus idea that anyone can do it just as long as they never quit and work really hard. That is what really makes me mad and frustrates me. From this story alone, I think you can see there are instances where people are placed in top positions and it's designed to make it appear as if they rose up, even though they didn't. However, they become the front people that are showcased and their real job is to make others 
think that they too can be in the less than 1% of network marketers. Those who are way up there though, are doing the dirty work and they, like the owners of these companies, defraud people in my opinion. This industry is very slimy at best. And if anyone in regulatory agencies started to piece together stories as I do, I think they would be able to see millions of people are taken advantage of by those who are running this ginormous scheme. This story includes a cast of colorful characters and a plethora of multi-level marketing companies. Let me know if you want me to look into something further, such as the Christopher Eugene Wright theory that somebody framed him or do a deep dive to some of these companies that were mentioned like Sizzle, Travani, Wake Up Now, Ideal Health, the Trump Network, New Skin, Django, Nurium, Noria, Jusuru, Isogenics, Prove It, or Advocare. What did you find most disturbing about Modare? Honestly, to me, this entire story could be a movie because there's so many different characters and they're all so very shady and there's so many levels of deception going on. Let me know your thoughts and opinions and remember you're beautiful and I love you. 